I think Mr. Robot is one of the best depictions of mental illness in any form of fiction. I respect that about you. The problem with most media is that it tends to generalize and misrepresent conditions in an undignified manner, such as confusing multiple personality disorder with schizophrenia. In fact, Elliot Alderson echoes this common ignorance by self-diagnosing himself as schizophrenic, when really, his mental conditions are clarified through his therapy sessions, which calls attention to the kind of misconceptions we're likely to make. Putting research and academia aside for a minute, the reason I say this is because for once I can totally empathize with the entire perspective of a character as I myself have suffered from clinical depression and still currently struggle with social anxiety disorder. Now, what is social anxiety disorder? Like depression, anxiety can easily be misunderstood. Whereas depression is more than just sadness, anxiety is more than just a feeling of nervous awkwardness. Social anxiety disorder is the persistent fear of social situations, whether it be interacting with other people or simply walking down a public street. It's a phobia with a disabling effect on a person's confidence and their ability to function normally in the real world. And Mr. Robot gets this, it isn't just another piece of fiction trying to make sense of a complex illness with insincerity or blatant ignorance. Creator Sam Esmiel frames the world through his own personal lenses, and Elliot's character draws entirely from Esmiel's very honest depiction of human sensibilities. That's why I feel Mr. Robot is more interesting in its examination of society and social behaviour rather than its actual story, and a big part of that comes from the metaphor that the show applies to itself. In episode 5, Exploits, Elliot illustrates that society, a collection of individuals who share common laws and values to retain order, is no different than a computer, a box made up of nodes, wires and electrical circuits that work together to create a functioning system. Both are invented and controlled by man and shaped accordingly to how the world functions, or indeed, needs to function. It might be a very cynical and oppressed view of the world, but this nihilism is commonly observed in many forms of media. In fact, Elliot's complete detachment and emotional insecurity is a much more subtle substitute for John Nanda's sunglasses giving him the ability to see the world for what it really is in They Live. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. Elliot sees the common distrust among humans and the way that technology has provided us with a barrier to evade most social interaction, fueling much of today's antisocial culture where social media is just a dubious alternative to the real. Its emphasis on hacking culture serves this metaphor in its own right. That technological barrier between individuals also acts as a backdoor for some to seemingly hack into the lives of others. Regardless of how impenetrable something is, it's still built by humans who are capable of making errors and being engineered and controlled just as much, if not more so, than a computer. All it takes is discovering their exploit. This guy is Christopher Heignagy. He's a specialist in the art of social engineering, a method of psychological manipulation that tricks the target into doing something that benefits the attacker. In his book Social Engineering, The Art of Human Hacking, hackers can easily attain access to most secured systems and hardware through a simple line of code. But the direct contact between the attacker and the victim has proven to be substantially more valuable. As Heidnagy explains, it's all about return on investment. Once you've broken through someone's vulnerabilities, who's to say that it isn't just them that can be influenced? It can become invisibly viral and spread through those connected to that one individual. And that's exactly what happens to Ollie. He's naive and gullible, hence is easily swayed by the lucrative idea of a free CD before the hacker uses Ollie's blatant unfaithfulness as blackmail to make him spread the malware across all CS network. This same concept occurs when Elliot breaks into Steel Mountain. Bill becomes an easy exploit to get into the building as they use his social media to find out he's a single middle-aged man living with his cat and working a low-level position. Hence, by painfully exposing Bill's loneliness and degrading him as worthless, it makes him vulnerable enough to become susceptible to Elliot's command. Tyrell's weakness, on the other hand, is his greatest strength his arrogance. Even though Tyrell appears to have more influence over Elliot, Elliot's detachment makes him too self-aware to pander to him and thus allows him to belittle Tyrell's elitism to the point of trying to impress Elliot, only to inadvertently get Elliot closer to his target. In this respect, Tyrell's response is one of fear similar to Bill. The fear that Tyrell won't be seen as an authority figure, hence why he takes his anger out on the lowest spectrum of society. 
You see, it isn't about the power that technology has on our lives, it's about how people exploit and manipulate others through their vulnerabilities. Vulnerabilities which we all manifest into our personal possessions. This perception of fear plays into the psyche of every character on the show, and when you broadly look at it, the show completely extracts the shell of identity that protects every character in all walks of fiction and in real life. And that's really the point that the show is making. Society's greatest fear is the complete exposure of our weaknesses and thus the collapse of any sense of empowerment. Elliot can exploit that lack of empowerment but also carries the motive of his character. When questioned by Terrell what his motive is, his response is simply that he wanted to save the world. What it becomes is actually a tragic reminder of his complete separation from society where his inability to interact with the world in a meaningful way has caused him to strive for a hero status that he's feeling miserably to achieve. This way anxiety becomes instrumental to all of Elliot's purpose in life. His mental illness makes him accept a helpless state in which he drifts further into isolation by making excuses to get out of social situations, cushioning himself in a cubicle based environment and wearing black to blend in with the world. He wants to be anonymous but also noticed in a world where as Rami Malek states he feels profoundly alienated from. This two state mindset then causes the creation of Mr. Robot as his more exuberant confident persona while lapsing back and forth between his introverted socially awkward demeanour. Sam Esmail indicates that Elliot's attempts at suppressing his pain are disrupted by his constant self contradictions. This is heightened by Rami Malek describing Elliot as incarcerated, trapped in a vicious cycle of not being able to make sense of what he actually wants. Many of us can empathise with this, the overwhelming ambiguity of what purpose you want or have in life which eats away at your ability to focus on what actually matters in that very moment. Elliot isn't inept, for the most part he does understand people, he can read situations intelligently and even has cunning instincts. He isn't quirky awkward, he's flustered awkward, unable to respond appropriately or rationalise his communication, hence his anxiety becomes characterised by frustration and anger much to the same effect as Tyrell. Elliot is like a cog within a machine that he wants to escape from. On the one hand he wants to help everyone but on the other his path is one that aims to disrupt the common everyday life. He's both a virus and an antivirus. He views the world like a computer's cold metal exterior and his mind and his hacking ability serve as his bubble in which to process and render the world around him. Mr. Robot finds a way to humanise and articulate our constant emotional fears and insecurities. Its expression of the human condition is both psychological and even physical. As Elliot says, those at the top like to play God, yet unlike Elliot, they lack the awareness to understand their own power, a power they can't really control. For me, I connect with Mr. Robot on a very individual level that's unique to my perception of reality, even if it lacks the clarity that we want in life. But bleakness aside, thankfully the show helps to visualise and communicate the internal circuits and components of being human.